Hey, just had to come on here and make this video. I'm driving through DC, heading back to Maryland. And for the first time, and I've, I've lived in Maryland, I've run non for profits in DC, I worked for the government in Alexandria. I used to work in DC. And I've never noticed how beautiful DC is. But they used to call it Chocolate City. Not anymore. This is the, like the second city I've been to that I've lived in and worked in uh, for a long time. The district and, also, and New York City. Our people, well, black people, are like, they're in non-existence. It's like they're gone or they're blended. And I'm not saying it's a, a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying, wow, um, demographics have changed. Communities have changed. And I, I'll say for some communities, it's been for the better. I thank God. Because I remember when it was, uh, when there were war zones. I've lost a lot of friends in D.C. Back in the 80s and 90s with crack. They, Killed my, my boy Raymond, and they, oh, they, Wayne. A, a lot of my, I lost a lot of friends during that period of time. Um, so it was rough, and New York was no better. New, DC was terrible. New York was no better, and that's how we grew up. But look how they changed it. And my question is, why didn't they change it then? You, you have you have drugs out now and it's it's a, you know what I mean this epidemic is like it's like it's a mental illness it's a medical illness but when crack was out it was a criminal offense Well, I'm just looking. And if you can see from my camera, you know what's amazing? Look at this, look at this volleyball. Volleyball. I'm on the highway. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not on the highway, I'm on the Potomac. Uh, where is, okay. Where am I? There's the monument. There's the Capitol. Well, anyway, look at that. Everybody's enjoying America. But people in the hood, people in the hood going through hell. People in the hood going through hell, being going through hell. And even today, in our communities, we we go into police brutality and you know, all this foolishness. Now I've been out the country for over three, almost three and a half years. No, but just about three years. I've been out the country and this uh, journey back, I'm like, wow. Um, and I, you know, I gotta tell all my brothers and sisters, there's a feeling, this is supposed to be the, you know, freedom for everyone. This country right here, this capital that I'm, I'm, I'm showing you. It's a good country, probably one of the best countries on earth. But for black people, it's gonna take a while. And we know it's just something, I don't know. It's like America wasn't, it wasn't designed for us. It wasn't, the Constitution has our ancestors, it's not even human beings, a full human being. It's just a step above cattle. Today, because of laws, we expect that uh, equality and equal <laughs> equal rights. Let's even get even better than that: civil rights. Just so people be civil towards you. 
it's going to be fully across. And how can it be? How can it be? Uh, so our history is is <laughs> our history is his story, and that's sad. So we rather live our lies than live on the truth and, and work from the truth. But yeah, I still say. It's the best country on. In 1,000 feet, on use the right two lanes to keep right. And when it lives up to it, have people that will help and try to live up to it. Keep right to Main Avenue Southwest. Be, be a paradise. Be a blessing. But one thing I do see people from all over the world, different ethnic groups, they are enjoying America, rightfully so. In a quarter of a mile. Keep left to I-395 North Southwest Freeway towards South Capitol Street. Black people Capital have State. to wake up. Black people have to wake up. All that foolishness, buying clothes and wasting money. Your, your disposable income, we're wasting a, a foolishness. You can, you can come to the, the continent and invest and, have, and feel the freedom. I feel the, oh, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. It's like a feeling you get even, I mean, when you get there, you're like, for one, you're like, wow. You're like in shock for like the first week or so. So you're like, wow. I didn't know people had, I didn't know people drove this and people did this and lived like this. Uh, one minute. somebody close up in his ranks that's uh as a whole use the left two lanes to keep left to i-395 southwest freeway towards south capitol street full escorts ambulance and all yeah so that's my thought on that it's like wow i remember i used to run a non-for-profit Yeah. It was a new community after school now we see program. Great uh run the corner from Howard. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, run the corner. So I was executive, I was the executive director of that. We did a lot of In 1, great feet, things. Exit left. Uh, for you then exit community. left. But as the years went on, you know, you sort of changed demographics and those communities exit changed left and those families I 395 North. Were then use the left three lanes to take exit 5 I695 I295 district of Columbia 295 use the left three lanes to take exit 5 I695 to I295 district of Columbia 295 yeah i do need this gps forget me it's been a while <laughs> Keep left to exit 28 I-295 South to I-95 I-495. Uh, yeah. I remember, I remember DC very well. Uh, I've, uh, I've worked uh, for the government, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, just, just some good things in the country and really, and for myself I learned a lot. I learned a lot working in different departments and uh, running different organizations. But as I as I return back, I, I have to say I look like opposition of a, a black folks here 
the well-to-do and the not too well-to-do. Well, the well-to-do are trying to outdo every, each other for homes and cars and clothing and bags and shoes. And I was like, wow, if they took that money collectively and invested it, and invested it, where would they be in five years? Where would they be in five to ten years? That, and I don't, you know, people should live their life how they how they gonna live it. Uh, so I'm just looking at it. I'm like, wow. And then as I live in as I live in different countries on the continent, even in Europe, I lived in Germany as well. I even in, listen. Oh, this is the only country where people waste a lot of their income. And especially, unfortunately, in America. America, our African American brothers and sisters, and Latinos and Chinese. I'm giving it's, it's, it's everyone. I'm not just saying we're the only people who got to do it. No, that's not true. You have the, you know, we're, you have white folks, Caucasians, Russians, you have the Italians, you, you do have every, but we catch it hell. We catch it, we catch it hell. You we drive the Lexus, we just, we just a black man or black woman in a Lexus. They don't care. I, I'm driving, as I drive through here, I remember that lieutenant who got pulled over the gas station right, right outside of D.C. in Virginia. He was in uniform. And the two officers were veterans. They knew his respect of the rank. They, they, they knew he was he was a, like a, a lawyer. And they, they based him and beat him and dragged him out. I said, wow. But I've been through something. I've been through something similar when I was a child. I remember running. I went to Roy H. Mann High School in Brooklyn, New York. In New York, <laughs> I'm saying, son. <laughs> and I remember we had to run. Like we, when we got out of the school, we had to run to like the like the train to all the buses there or there. And you, the, the buses used to be packed. It didn't matter. We had to get in like sardines. Because if we did it and we missed the bus, there used to be white folks out there. And not kids. Like I mean, we were in junior high school. So it wasn't like it was junior high school kids, or it was high school kids and uh, adults. Adult men and women. And they used to spit on us and hit us with sticks and, and, and they had bats and it was crazy. And that's how with the junior high school. So people tell me, yo, you that shit happened so long ago. No, it didn't. But you know you can overcome that. You can overcome that. You can beat the game. That's the system is to have you go down and you can beat the game. I, I figured it out. I thank God I figured out at a young age. I think that but, about 17, I think, well, actually, yeah, 17 years old, I was a young kid living in Vanderbilt, Brooklyn, growing up, the Vanderbilt VIP posse, big up, you know, we were just trying, we were just trying to figure our way out, but everything was, you know, hip-hop was all about, you know, East Coast, West Coast, you know, it was all about, you know, hip hop, then you had dance hall, Buju Bantan, you know, you had just, just a lot of violence, everything was <coughs> pick up a 44 and bum bum, you know, and that was our culture, that's what we grew up in, just like we found out the CIA was responsible for putting crack in the black communities, everything came out now. So we were, you know, we were targeted. 
that, that's what we did. We used to, you know, everybody was scrapped. Everybody was, everybody it was like a war zone. You go, I used to go to Best Time. It's crazy. Now I, I was, I'm sleeping at Best Time. I was, I've just been, I, I've been in Best Time for the last couple of months. And I was sleeping. I would, I was, I was sit there with no fear. I'm sitting in the car. I go upstairs in, in, in the apartment. I'm chilling with no fear before I remember as a teenager, not even a teenager, a young man, I used to come back from the army. You had to duck and dodge. You go through different communities. Peak houses, Flatbush, especially Flatbush, East Flatbush, oh my God, the 90s. Best, uh, Fort Greene. That was, that was it. But, thank God, it's a different world today. It's a different place. Different place. Thank God we look at uh, drug addiction as a mental, a mental, and a medical. You know, <laughs> pathology, you know, pathological defect. You know, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And marijuana. Wow. We. New York, you go to Times Square, people smoking weed next to them. Walking by the police officers. Everybody's cordial. Everybody's good. Everybody's hot. Everybody's chilling. They'll arrest you for riding a scooter, a motorcycle. I remember back in the day, that was a. I think the first time the police took me to the police station was for riding a motorcycle. My friends and I, we used to have dirt bikes and everything. And we wanted to be teenagers too, like everybody else, but I guess that privilege is only given to those who can afford to go upstate and go to different places and, or have communities like uh, Coney Island and different areas of Brooklyn and different areas of Vincent Hurts, they could ride their bikes, parks. We didn't have that, so we had to ride in the street. And then we were criminalized without it. But today, everybody's riding. They ride electric bikes, motorbikes, motorcycles with no license plates. I'm like, wow. It's truly, uh, everything's decriminalized. Criminalized. And you know what I also find ironic is all those crimes that are decriminalized are the same crimes that incarcerated many, many black youth. Or if it didn't incarcerate them, it, it gave them negative records that they couldn't they couldn't obtain government jobs, they couldn't obtain city jobs. So those black youth have become black men. Um, now you decriminalize that. And even if you're in jail, you say, okay, we'll let you out. But what about um, the men that now are walking the street and, you know, or didn't have an opportunity to get a good job? Why not somehow right that wrong? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. If the person's competent and, and can show that they... They can learn to do a skill, and they, can, they or they have some skill set. Why mile. not employ them? Use the left three lanes to and let's look at let's kind of like get them a, a waiver for their you know the, their criminal record that they committed because at the time that was the position they were put in. <coughs> Excuse me, that was the position they were put in to survive, and intentionally it was. They were put in that position. So, you say it's a move for Thor. Oh, my allergies. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah. Keep left to Maryland 210 South toward Indian Head. Oh, oh my, I tell you. But, uh, yeah, so. The, the, <laughs> It's, it's, it's crazy. And you know, think about it. 
those same people who do, who now uh, continue straight for 12 minutes to Maryland. Although they have to get good jobs, Waldorf. Right? Where do you think they have to live in the New York City? <laughs> they can't. Hell, I went down in here being bees. But starting, I mean, if you want to probably Airbnb, you were paying nothing less than twelve hundred, and that's for a room. For an apartment, you're paying nothing less than seventeen, and that's for a small box. I'm telling you, I was there. You know, they got. I was in the right there next to the building that the Biggie Small boroughs in. I was, you know, I was chilling. So. Uh, but it was a it was a blessing, but, you know. Life, life, and I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for my life. You know, I think my I, my population who are, I think my target market, my target market of people who I would like to really like. I think I could, could, could who could identify with me. But those like from like oh let's see like 48 to like 67 eight yeah because I you know, I've seen some things and um, I could I could share my experiences with you and I would love to to keep others from going through some of the nonsense I've gone through one thing I want to encourage all people of color to I want you to experience going to the continent but before you go I want you to research because there's like 54 countries and trust me they're all different 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 I've lived in uh, Rwanda I lived in Tanzania I lived in Kenya uh, I've gone to Senegal the Gambia um Uganda, Kampala, I've been, you know, so, but the, it's, and, and I've lived in Germany, uh, but all these in Europe going off, the, these countries are different. So research the countries, listen to, don't listen so much to the, to the YouTubers, but you can get a feel, but try just to, you know, just uh, read, read. Yeah, read about culture, read about people. And uh, but the continent is a place that you you want to go. And if you if you don't win those um, uh, DNA tests and ancestry tests, uh, and your bloodline goes somewhere, why not? And you know, go check it out. Uh, I I say that I didn't go to mine, but I went to West Africa, uh, and I, I I like West Africa. West Africa, I gotta say, it's a more of a my brother, my sisters, welcome home, kind of love. I think that's why Ghana is so popular. Also with all the promotion they did, um, with celebrities and everything with the year return. But West Africa, I found that also in the Gambia and I found that also in, in Senegal. It's, <coughs> it was more welcome, my brother and sister. And they love you, it's love. Now, what, East Africa, they love you too. I mean, they love you too. Uh, it's is it, is it, they don't I don't East Africa they had I have they're not taught American history and that kind of history and why should they West Africa I can understand because most of the slaves that are in, are in America uh, originated from West Africa it was the West it was the slave trade uh, it was exactly with the current from the water so it would make sense that they would be more understanding and opening to uh, African Americans because they share the same history whereas East Africa they, they don't they, you know a lot of people not, when I'm in Kenya and, and other places they never heard of a, a black American they say how are you a black American you're American you're, you're, how can you be a black American what is that and it, I'm, I'm, I'm being dead ass they have no concept of anything um so it's, uh, it's it's different, but every I think all parts, any part of Africa, you should visit.
because you'll find that love throughout the continent because you'll feel it. You'll feel it just the fact that you're not a target. You'll feel the fact that you are loved and respected. A lot of these countries, there's no crime. It's like no crime. No one's shooting. Nobody's stabbing. Nobody doing anything. Yeah, you'll have petty bullshit in some of the countries. Uh, pickpocketers. And, and you, might even get your, you might even get your, your phone snatched. Dead ass. You might even get your phone snatched. But it's not a common occurrence. It's, and, that's the, and that's the most serious thing. You know what I mean? So I think you just got to... I just had my phone up. Sorry. I think, you know... You just gotta be careful when you go places, but you don't have to be fearful. You'll feel you don't have to be fearful. No one's gonna harm you. No one's gonna hurt you. Like in Rwanda, you can walk any hour of the night, have money come out of your pocket. Nobody's gonna bother you. You know what I mean? You're good. And it's like Rwanda's one that it's so clean. It's like one of the cleanest countries in the world. And you don't believe me, you can go ahead and Google that. That's, you know, it's like, and it's safe. No matter if you're in the hood, no matter where you're at, you're safe. And that's a feeling, and you're free, and you're respected. Respected. People look at you, you respected. You can walk with your head up. Chin out. You know what I mean? Chest up. You feel good. You feel good. And if you got if you got a flow of income coming in, you can live, you can sleep every day, five star this, do this, fly this, go on the yacht, do whatever. You can live. You can live. And it don't take much. And it don't take much. And all that garbage they told you about kids with flies on them and all that. That's bullshit. You got you got royalty from Europe and these countries. They That's their holiday. They come there. They're there. You got black queens and kings and Spanish queens and kings and and you got people that, you know, have means and you're chilling. You're among the best. You're living around people in embassies and you're you're there. And you're living the best that the world has to offer. The Indian Ocean. Clear the ocean. Clear. You see your feet, you see the fish. Malls and and and, muse, and museums and and the trains and high speed and technology in Africa in Africa penthouses with the, the room spinning and make America look like ugh and I've been all through America I've been in the military I've been all over they can't compete but yet you think Africa is for savages and, and people you know it's sad because I, I, I think a lot of people, when they, they, they think about Africa, they look at Nigerians. Nigerians have done good with their uh, Holly, um, what is it, Holly, not Hollywood, it's um, Nollywood. And Nollywood has pushed a lot of movies out, and they show that Ni Nigerians are rich, and and, and they come, they, they see themselves as royalty, but they also show a lot of parts of Nigerian stories, and which is, you know, the villages and things like that. So people look at those things and think people still live like that today. That's the perception that they think people live in. And then when they have, and unfortunately, when a lot of Nigerians in America have been labeled and, and, and viewed as scammers and, and people that are, you know, some like un, untrustworthy or something like that. I don't know why. I don't know why. And you know, we, and, and, and black people, we, we, we perpetuate that foolishness because I remember growing up as a teen, it was people from Jamaica and people from the overseas. They were they were all off the banana boat and da, da 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 It was all the same thing. It was like self-hate. We had to find a way to self-hate the others. Did it with the Puerto Ricans. Black brought up with Puerto Ricans. Found a way to divide. We lived in the same community, but it was a final way to divide, even though we lived in the same community. The system, I mean, <laughs> the system is great. You got to look. But... It worked. It worked just as it was designed to work, and that's what it did. That was amazing. In retrospect, I look back at that. You had black and Puerto Ricans. I remember. I remember being a child, and uh, blacks and Puerto Ricans lived in the same community on the same block, same buildings. Fifty-five mile per hour speed limit. Camera ahead. Please watch your speed. That's how. That's how they Fifty-five sound like. mile per hour speed limit. Camera ahead. That's how. That's how they sound like that. Yeah, and I recall um, 
it was a it was a divide that it's always a divide in our community. You know, it, it goes in levels because even the, even in the, the West Indian community, it was it was everybody was against the Haitians. Everybody was against the Haitians, and then then everybody was didn't it was the, the divide within the, the Jamaicans. It was the Rastafarians, the Rastafarians, as all well, or just regular Christian Jamaican. It was like take a time. It was, it was like always a divide somewhere. Always a divide somewhere. It's sad. Even today, it's, it's a divide. I lived in Atlanta. I've had stores in Atlanta. I had three stores in Atlanta. Uniform stores, and I worked with a lot of parents, and a lot of schools, and a lot of different uh, churches. I did a lot of uniforms, and it, it was the, the divide there amongst the, the schools and and, 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 and the, the, the people, the haves and the half not, because you know the Atlanta is, 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 a, is a unique community. You can go from wealth to half wealth. And, Looking like wealth and different, it was different levels, you know. And it's not Atlanta; it's basically everybody outside of Atlanta. You know, you got Decap County, you got Fulton County, you got uh, Fayette County, and, and it's just different levels of this. And uh, everybody's competition with everybody in Atlanta. And, but I actually, I did. I, I wish I would have kept my businesses in in, in the DMV and, and Laurel. In one mile, use the left three lanes to keep left to Maryland 228 East Waldorf. Then but, turn left. Uh, that's a video for another day. But is but you know it overall I'm grateful because I was blessed in both in both uh, both opportunities. The business did very well, and I thank God. And I think people who work helped me do well. I think that's a fair a fair way to say it. But um, yeah, so we live in a different world. Different world. But uh, I just wanted to come on. I didn't make this video. Um, I said, you know, um, it's time. And you know, I gotta, I gotta say something else. I wanted to get, the, I want people to get to know me. So I'm just like. Uh, Let's see what's on my mind. Somebody did some petty, some petty stuff today um, with my grandchild, one of my grandchildren. You know, you know people are funny. Let me tell you something. Anybody who knows me, anybody who knows me, know that I am a caring individual. I think because I got I I, I I came up hard. You know what I mean? I came up hard, so I, I came up hard. I had some blessing in my life. I had some blessing. Use the left three lanes to um, keep left to Maryland two twenty eight East. Know, I came up hard. Then use any lane to turn left on Maryland um, two twenty eight East. I maybe mean, you know, I'm a caring person, I'm a giving person. And I've given a lot of people a lot of things. I helped a lot of people. And I've taken all my blessings, all my blessings, and I've always shared my blessings with others. That has just been the way. So, but when I tell people I can't help them anymore, or I don't help them anymore, they resent you more than the people that you never helped ever. And I don't look for anything in return. I never. I never asked anybody for anything in return. And people who, who I help can probably attest to that. I've never asked anyone for anything back. And I never re expected anything back. If the only thing I expected back was just uh, respect and, and mutual love, you know, and respect. But if you, like I said, even if you found some reason to Use dislike me. Use any lane to me, turn left on Maryland 228 uh, East. At least just respect it, you know. but I only respect that. I only expect that because I know people. People are just fuck. Excuse my language. Just uh, people. In three point seven uh, miles, they, turn right. So on I get my road. blessings from God. Even today, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, I I know that I'm blessed, and 
I'm grateful when people can surprise you. And I think if you're in that age range, if you're on my age, I'm 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 in my 50s. I ain't a friend. I'm be 58 this year. Wow. I don't see it though. I don't even feel it. You know what I mean? I don't feel it, but I'll be 58 this year. And um, you've seen some things at this age, and you can identify. You can identify. You've been like, wow. Don't be surprised. It ain't just you. <laughs> everybody, everybody around these ages, it's age time. You, they, people, people doing some crazy things. I think it's perspective on people's um, looking at the world. Looking at you know, look at how they perceive the world, so they behave in different ways. But um, you could be good. This boy play his music and jam it. He's good. <laughs> I don't blame you. Enjoy life, brother. Yeah. So you, they see in different. You know, people. You see some things. But. Okay. So. Um, on that note, I think I really want to say this has been probably the best introduction um, I've presented thus far of who I am. I'm a good, I'm a regular guy. I think I'm a good guy. Some people probably think I'm a model, an MF. I don't know, but people have you know. It, it's, it's like with me. I remember. I remember um, my ex-wife, my my second ex-wife, said, "With you, Tony, it's it's no great line. It's either people love you or they hate you." <laughs> and you know what? I gotta say, I think she's you know I think she called it correctly. And she called it correctly. Another thing I give her credit for, I should say, you know, boy, I see you in some times. And I and that's true. I have been in ooh, I've been in some in some times going through this business. I and I was uh, we were I mean, we were together like 16, 17 years. And always at the at the end, where could it be the worst outcome? A blessing come through. And she used to always say, Boy, I tell you. God take care of two types of people, children and fools. So I always wonder which one I, what was I? Was I the child of God or was I a fool? So until today, I'm still getting those blessings. So, <laughs> oh, now that how the old say it go, what a tangle we, what the tangle web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Ha <laughs> ha, go ahead. All right, guys. Good night, and thank you for listening to my uh, ranting. I'll come back and pick up in a day or two. Thank you for taking me, taking the time to listen to me. I'd like to get to know all you guys. Maybe we can chat, we can have you know, we can get through this journey of life together. You can share some of your, you know, experiences. And, you know, we can just be a network of people to make this thing happen. And at the end of the day, it, it'll give us something all to do and keep us busy. All right, guys, take it easy. Good night.